Our guest now is uh, a Texan-born uh, Australian who has spent the last decade of his life in relationship counselling, and uh, his name is Rob Tiller. Uh, but like our previous guest, um, Rob Tiller now finds himself uh, unemployed as a consequence, uh, he believes, of some pri private statements he made reflecting on his experience as a relationship counsellor, in particular, uh, in publishing data which showed that in domestic violence uh, it is often a shared blight uh, between men and women, that we cannot divide victims strictly according to gender. Uh, as we found in the opening news bulletin where a male has been killed uh, by his female partner. So uh, we ought to hear the story of Rob Tiller. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Rob, how are you this morning? Oh, I'm great, Ross. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Well, just tell us firstly, uh, give us one experience. What causes someone to go into relationship counselling? And give us one satisfying moment in your last decade as a counsellor with Relationships Australia. Uh, sure thing. I, I've, I've always been interested in what makes uh, a relationship good. And, and I've been dedicated for uh, my whole career in terms of helping couples uh, get along better. I mean, one story would be, uh, I guess in terms of, this is a story of a father who came, for, uh, came to me for uh, anger management uh, coaching or counseling. And, and so basically when this guy would show up at home, you know, his kids would hear him pull into the driveway and they would make a beeline for their rooms because he was, he was a bit of a, a grumpy bear. And, and by the end of our work together, he said when he pulled up in the driveway, his kids would run out to meet him. Wow. Well, your work has been always described as exemplary. You've always been, you're, you're highly thought of, highly regarded. So what happened with, uh, in your opinion? I even, I, even, I even got a pay rise last year, Ross. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, um, what uh, happened in your opinion with Relationships Australia. So tell us the story. You put Bettina Arndt's article up on your Facebook page. What then happened? And that article was questioning whether, uh, whether domestic violence runs both ways, whether it's uh, shared. It's not just uh, men against women, it is shared. Uh, so tell us what then happened. Yeah, so Bettina's article, she spent six months researching the latest uh, international as well as government statistics and was making a case that, that generally domestic violence is two-way, uh, which means that women as well as men engage in family violence. So for me, that was quite validating in terms of what I'd been seeing in the, in the couple's work I've been doing uh, all these years. I, I was thinking, finally, you know, somebody is telling the truth about what's happening uh, behind the scenes in, in families. Uh, and so Relationships Australia has what's considered a gendered, uh, feminist-based model of domestic violence, which classifies men as perpetrators, women as victims, and, and ultimately minimizes women's role in family violence. So then I post a link to Bettina's article, a, a discussion starts among, amongst my colleagues, uh, and, and, and and yeah, and there's a lot of uh, agreement out in the, the professional community with regards to practitioners that I work with saying, yes, this is our experience too. Now, we're going to <clears throat> uh, ask you... And that got me in trouble. Yes. Well, look, that's the next, that's the question. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Of the Relationships Australia is maintaining that you were not sacked, but that you resigned. That is their defence. Of course, the law... Uh, recognises a principle of constructive dismissal uh, where the management makes it clear to you that you are not welcome and that you should, quote, do the right thing, uh, as in war when the uh, captured uh, soldier is handed a revolver. <laughs> We're going to come back to you and ask you to tell us what happened. But before we do that, I'm going to read the philosophy of Relationships Australia, which you referred to, this taxpayer-funded uh, agency, which says from its website, 
Rahway's family and domestic violence policy is historically framed by a feminist analysis of gendered power relations. This analysis argues that men have had status and privilege in society that have generally been unavailable to women because of men's control of social structures and practices. Within this cultural context, men have relatively more power than women and children, and this frequently means they have power over women and children. In this social context, family and domestic violence is viewed as gendered violence and has largely been hidden and private. Uh, so what we're seeing, in my judgment, is an extremist ideological organisation uh, which seems uh, at first glance to be persecuting alternative opinions. Uh, but will you tell us now, uh, Rob Tiller, what happened? What was management's response to this breakout of a frank discussion uh, among your colleagues? Yeah, so, so then I'm sitting with the executives, two executives, and uh, essentially what they're saying to me is, uh, you, you've breached our domestic violence policy by you circulating Bettina's article on your uh, Relationships Australia email address. You've breached our domestic violence policy. And I was, and I said to the CEO, I said, well, show me where in the policy it says specific journalist or periodicals that we're not supposed to talk about. And, and she said, there isn't one. And, and so I said, well, then this is setting a precedent. And she nodded in agreement. So basically, then they said uh, exactly what you said, Ross. We don't want you here anymore. If you want to save your, uh, your work record, if you, wanna, if you don't want a black mark on your work record, then you need to resign. Well, this and is... It this, Rob, is where it gets really scary, uh, and this links, Ross, back to what we were talking about with Peter Ridd. Uh, part of what you were accused of was, wait for it, unconscious bias. And this was on the basis that you made fun of feminism because you had a couple of jokes about feminism on your Facebook page, and this pointed to unconscious bias. This is the heart of the worst of the hard left march through the institutions, Rob. Here we've just had a previous guest. Both of you hauled over the coals for so-called humour. This is like East Germany, seriously. Uh, but tell us, and then this idea of unconscious bias, that you're not even aware that you are biased against women. So therefore you have this uh, weird kind of thing going on. Tell us about unconscious bias and your opinions. So that, that's what was implied by the executives, that basically, because I'm agreeing with Bettina, I'm now sexist, if not misogynist, which means I'm not safe to work with the clients that I've been working with for 10 years. Some of these people, my clients, have been with me four and five years, highly traumatized characters, uh, some of them, and they basically shut the door on me. They say, you can't go back, you can't uh, close off these uh, therapeutic relationships with these people that you've known and worked with for, for years. And, and, and that, that was a, a tough pill for me to swallow. And, and so with regards to the unconscious bias side of things, it, it's, it's, it's an accusation. It's saying, and, and it's an accusation based on bad policy, like you were saying, Ross. Uh, bad policy that's resulting in you know, good practitioners like Pete earlier, uh, and myself, as well as other men. I mean, I've, I've had other men call me up and say, uh, you know, I've gone through what you're going through, and it, it's not fair. Let me just ask you, we're, we're just running out of time, but how many male counsellors, speaking of unconscious bias, how many male counsellors are there in Western Australia's uh, Relationships Australia office? Well, in their Perth headquarters, where I was the only male counselor, uh, at this point, there's none. If you, okay. call, if you call in, they'll say there's one, but there's actually not. Well, look, uh, thanks very much, Rob Tiller, for joining us and telling us your story. We wish you well and a speedy return to your vocation.
So if, if people want to read more about my story, I mean, the thing about it, Ross, is, yeah, this has to do with me, but Bettina's started this campaign. Go to Bettina's website, have a look, read the details, and it, and it actually spells out why this is an important social issue. Because it's not just about me, it's, it's about what's going on on a cultural level with, with these bad policies that are in these government-funded organizations that aren't actually providing uh, services to men that are male friendly. Well, there it is. Uh, Thank you very much, Rob. Thank thanks you. for joining us, Rob Tiller. There it is. Relationships Australia, <laughs> clearly an unfriendly uh, place for male staff uh, and for male, uh, male seeking help with relationships because you will be regarded as a gendered, violent person. Uh, what's, what's scary about both these stories is they're so similar in that uh, you have a uh, sense of humour being attacked, you have an, a different opinion to political correctness being attacked, uh, people out of a job, it's sort of being shuffled around, oh, no, no, we didn't, this, this whole game of, no, 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 we didn't get rid of them because of, 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 yeah. of the political correctness, we got rid of them, all this other, all these other, the code and the this and that. This is sinister stuff, and Australians should be really deeply, deeply worried about this. This is the march through the institutions. We've talked about it, we've heard about it, this is it, in reality, costing people jobs and their livelihood. Terrifying.